Ah, the American middle class. A demographic so fragile that the price of gasoline dictates our worldview. Like so many of you, I detest the condition of poverty and require a six-digit passive income to feed my starving family. In pursuit of this goal, I elected to freeload a bunch of money off the internet with the intent of buying some ghetto-adjacent real estate in order to establish my Theta Gang fiefdom. I call this mission the Freeloader Challenge. Although the journey to a freeloaded house will be long, it is just as Argentine physician Aziz Chestbra once said, you keep putting one foot in front of the other and eventually you'll be aesthetic AF. Up to this point, I've collected approximately $2,500 as demonstrated in previous videos. Fortunately, as my freeloading proficiency increases, so too does my rate of earnings. In this episode, I will demonstrate how I added to my freeloader treasure chest $587 in Visa gift cards. $40 in Amazon gift cards, $103 in Bitcoin, and $19 in PayPal payouts. This sums up to $749, which will push me over the $3,000 mark. Finally, I have caught up to the amount of money they would have paid me if I got into the malaria study in episode 2. All of this money is set aside among several accounts that I will eventually consolidate when it's time to found my fiefdom. To achieve this gain, I used a number of online resources that are available to all 50 states and many other countries except Russia. In this video, I'll lean heavily into the focus groups and promotion churning buckets, with a light touch on surveys and class action settlements. We'll start with the one that brought the thickest payouts, the focus groups bucket. Companies that require feedback on a product or service are all too happy to pay for in-depth, concentrated discussions with common folk like us, their target market. These feedback sessions are called focus groups. These can be tricky to get into, but fortunately there are websites that can help you enroll. My favorite one by far is userinterviews.com. Once you set up your profile, you'll start receiving email alerts to sign up to focus groups the site thinks you're likely to get into. Or you can just browse the site and sign up to whatever you want. Every user interview study is digital only, so you can do it from the comfort of your mom's basement. Or if you prefer, there are other websites that offer in-person focus groups with free food but those tend to be a lot longer and of course require travel. Over the past few weeks, I completed two focus groups directly through user interviews and did a third focus group when a previous user interviews researcher called me back directly to join their new study. On user interviews, I did a 30 minute product test and feedback session for a company that wanted a monthly subscription in exchange for adding some hotkey widget to Twitch. It wasn't my favorite product, but they paid me a $40 Amazon gift card for my critical feedback and I did another task in which I read an insurance policy out loud into my phone so a company could test its voice recognition software. This only took 10 minutes, but it paid a meager $10. This low set of returns from user interviews is by far the least luck I've had with these focus groups, and this contrasts sharply with the previous month in which I received over $600. You can see that in the last episode. Fortunately, a previous user interviews researcher named John Nimble called me back directly and asked me to join a new study they were doing on microphones for $300. As painful as it was, I had to say no because I was going on vacation that week. But John Nimble really wanted me, so he said if I could squeeze him in, he'd give me an extra $100. So of course I did it. For 15 to 20 minutes per day for four days, I uploaded some footage of me talking about USB microphones in response to their prompts. And as an added bonus, since the researcher was pleased with my participation, he offered me yet another $100 if I could give his colleague an hour on Zoom to talk further about my experience. Of course, I happily obliged. In total, this gave me $500 in Visa gift cards and more than compensated for the weak returns on the other focus groups. This is why I always recommend putting a good faith effort into your focus groups. Companies take this research seriously, and if you put some good effort in, they'll take care of you. If you can get on someone's shortlist like I am with John Nimble, you'll get surprise calls with large offers out of the blue. I expect the focus groups bucket to only become more lucrative. I strongly recommend getting on user interviews and putting in some work. They recently implemented a referral program in which the new user and referrer each get an extra $10 after the new person's first focus group. Any income I get from those referrals is withdrawn separately, not associated with the freeloader challenge. If you want to board this train, my referral link is in the description. The other king of freeloading is the promotion churning bucket. When a company like Acorns or SoFi or a video game developer like Plarium's Raid Shadow Legends wants to get more engagement with their product, they have two choices. One, advertise, spend money to run ad campaigns and hope for downloads. 
or two, just pay people to try your product and hope they stick around. Option two is becoming more popular lately, and websites are springing up to collect these marketing campaigns so you can easily select the ones you want to get into. My favorite of these is freecash.com. Compared to similar websites like Swagbucks or Inbox Dollars, I find that Freecash pays out much more reliably and their payouts are higher. Freecash sponsored a video in the past, and during our Zoom call, I asked about why Freecash rewards are higher than similar websites. The rep I talked to said their goal is to pay out larger rewards than other websites so that people continue with free cash instead of the others. This is a classic example of market competition at work, and we users are the beneficiaries. I highly recommend watching my video on free cash. This service is not to be missed. I spent the last few weeks on vacation, so I didn't do quite as much promo churning this time around but I did do a handful of easy offers to pull $103. The highest paid one was Zengo, listed on OfferToro's wall. Zengo is a crypto exchange that offers staking rewards, much like BlockFi or Celsius. I opened an account on Zengo, moved $50 of Bitcoin from my trust wallet to Zengo, collected the $68 reward from Freecash, and promptly moved all $118 back into my trust wallet. Easy clap, the whole thing was done in 10 minutes. I also did Traffic Puzzle for $17. This game took about 6 hours of gameplay, so I don't necessarily recommend it, but if you like the match 3 type puzzle games and play these games anyway, you might as well get paid for it. The rest was from a handful of ticky tacky things like the Steady app for shopping rewards and some survey site download. Nothing worth getting hyped about. But I do strongly recommend getting on Zengo and getting your $68. You might even want to actually stash some crypto there for the staking rewards. If you have not done so already, I'd recommend opening up a dedicated bank account for your freeloading income. Keeping your money separate will help you see the rewards build up, and you can also call your freeloading a sole proprietorship so you can write off any expenses you occur on this mission. I use Aspiration as my bank account, which paid me $64 on free cash for signing up, and then I linked Long Game to it, in which you get cash rewards into Aspiration for playing their little games and of course another $40 from free cash. Unfortunately, those don't appear to be listed anymore since their ad campaign is complete. But through OfferToro, you can stash your money on SoFi, which will award you $72 on free cash. If you really want to use Aspiration and Long Game like me, I'll drop my referral in the description. Just be aware that using those means you won't get the awards from free cash. Right now, I will withdraw my free cash rewards as Bitcoin straight to my trust wallet, and there it will stay for the time being. What I expect to do in the next episode is sign up to a bunch of these sports betting apps, take the cash rewards and the in-app promo bonuses, and bet on opposing teams to guarantee some wins. That way I'm double dipping by getting paid from free cash for signing up and then getting paid for betting on the game itself. I've got high hopes for that strategy and I'll share the results just in time for the NBA playoffs. Let's move on to the class actions bucket. The reward here is pretty low, but the effort is close to nothing. If you've ever heard a company is settling a class action lawsuit, that means the company in question is going to give people money to get a lawsuit dropped. Way back in, I believe, 2016, I claimed my payout from a class action settlement in which some milk company got sued for slaughtering milk cows too early in their life, thus artificially decreasing the supply of milk and raising prices. Six years later, I finally got my $26.41. Inflation adjusted, that's less than it was in 2016. Fortunately, it doesn't usually take nearly that long to get your settlement payouts, usually a couple of months at the most. But when it does arrive, it feels like free money. I recommend combing topclassactions.com every month or so to see what you qualify for. If anyone has bought McCormick Spices since 2013, here's a free $15 for you. And just as honorable mentions, I want to bring up survey apps since they seem to be where everyone starts their freeloading journeys. There are a thousand survey sites, almost all of them suck. The one that I like best is Adipole since it's a mobile app with short surveys that pay out straight to PayPal. I don't do this a lot anymore since the payout doesn't compete with focus groups or promo churning. However, I do look for these 3 minute 91 cent surveys. On Adipole this month, I made $9. If you want to use surveys, Adipole is the most user friendly. You know where to find my referral. You can also do surveys on free cash. Every time you complete one, you'll also get a chance to enter this rewards ladder. I've never gotten past an extra 80 cents from it, but some people do cash out about 50 bucks a day just doing this. I don't necessarily recommend using your time that way, but you can if you want to do surveys. The last thing I want to mention is the GetUpside app. Everyone is complaining about gas prices, and the whole just buy an electric car thing ain't gonna work. But if you use the GetUpside app, you'll save between 10 and 20 cents a gallon in the form of cash back. You won't get savings like these $2 a gallon ones on my screen unless you're referring people, but even 10 cents a gallon does add up. It's like a free Slurpee. Any money I get from this obviously doesn't count toward the freeloader challenge since you have to spend money to get cash back, but if you're already freeloading, you might as well save load too. This isn't sponsored by the way, I just like the app. 
Now with all these buckets filled and $749 of assorted goods in my pocket, it's time to liquidate everything into cash so I can properly stash it in my aspiration account. There it will give me rewards in long game for reinvestment. In general, if you use long game every day and play their silly games, you'll get about 8% APY. I was worried that this percentage would scale down, but it actually appears that I'll earn even more interest as this account grows. I'll keep you guys in the loop on that. To go from gift cards to cash, I reached out to Joe Blackwood once again, who agreed to buy my gift cards from me at 95% of face value. If you need cash for your cards, I recommend our gift card exchange subreddit. Amazon cards go for about 98% of face value, so you can get a decent deal. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll find a Joe Blackwood of your own. Now that all my cash is deposited in Aspiration and my crypto is in my trust wallet, my freeloader stash looks like this. About 1,770 in Aspiration. 1,100 of crypto in my trust wallet, 0.1 Ethereum worth about 300 bucks on Ledger X, and about $50 of shitcoins on Coinbase. This puts me at a little over $3,200 and one step closer to becoming a slumlord. If you like this content, don't forget to drop a like so YouTube gives this video the respect it deserves. See you next time as I continue my adventure to found the Theta Gang fiefdom.